at age 17, I graduated from high school and I got a work permit for two months and uh, I got a job at uh, at a shop and save at a grocery store um, <laughs> and, uh, and that job was fucking weird too uh, and and then like a couple months well no because I had a work permit hold on I'm trying to remember the details of it oh yeah because okay so I got a work permit and then I like kept that work permit until I got my green card yeah because I got my green card right after my freshman year of college uh and so that work permit carried me through the 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 year and then I didn't need to renew it the next year because I got the green card and all that kind of stuff right okay so but so I worked at like a bunch over the summer I'm you know I made uh, a good friend and we would hang out and like it was great because I was like awesome there's another cynical fucking cashier and bagger person that I can like hang out with, uh, and I remember there were the like the way this court thing was set up is there's one general manager, then there was uh, then there was like uh, a front end manager, uh, and she did not like me, and then there was a uh, a grocery manager and a stock manager, uh, and those two guys were great. Um, I actually gave the stock manager one of my favorite ties because you had to wear a tie at, at this job. Uh, you, you had to wear a dress shirt, a white dress shirt, and a and a solid colored tie, uh, and like slacks and shit. So I I get so the dude was like always kind of impressed with a couple of my ties, which I basically took a bunch of the ties that my dad didn't fucking like. And I was just like, you know what? I don't give a shit. You've been an asshole to me all my life. You don't wear this shit. This shit just stays in a bag and you don't even fucking notice them. So I don't give a shit. And I took his ties. And some of them were very nice. And then I bought myself a tie. I bought myself a tie and, and that was the, I was very excited about it. And that became my favorite tie. It was, it was a red tie that I had. Um, and it was, and I bought it from Macy's on sale for eight dollars. I was very excited that it was on sale, and that, and I, and I, I was like really excited about it. Um, I think I bought it. I might have bought it with my subway money actually, and because I think I had, I had it like before I graduated. By the way, right before I got this job, <laughs> I recorded my very first album album that I don't think many people will ever fucking hear. Uh, unless, like, somehow, like, somebody releases it through, like, you know, some, something, like, and that's how it gets released out there, uh, I recorded an album when I was fucking 17 years old, uh, at a coffee shop called The Coffee Den that doesn't fucking exist anymore, and I did that, like, a week before I started, uh, my job at Shop and Save, um, and so, yeah, I just kind of remember uh, a couple things about that job that kind of, like, irked me. Uh, one of the days, so I always, I hated being a cashier because it was just so boring. Like, I wasn't doing anything. So I went and talked to the general manager, and he was like, sure, uh, you can be a cashier, and then we'll get you trained to be a stock boy, too, so you can go, like, do stock stuff, unload pallets, and re restock the shelves and things like that. So when it's slow, you have something to do. And I was like, fucking awesome. So, uh, so that, so, you know, the two managers, the grocery manager and stock manager would talk to me and they would figure stuff out. And every so often they would be like, are you busy? And be like, no, there's fucking nobody here. And they're like, great, we have a pallet, let's do, and I was like, fuck yeah, let's do this. And it was awesome, like kept me physically active. I felt good about it. I felt like I was still like kind of working out and stuff. Uh, and one of the days that happened and they called me and there was like a big pallet of like, uh, sodas or something that I had to undo. And I was very excited about it and I started doing it. And then the front end manager, she calls me over the, over the intercom. Uh, and, uh, and I like, I was like, ah, shit. And the other stock boy was like, go, 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 go. So I, I ran back up and, uh, I get there and, and, sh and somebody else is ringing on my register. And I was like, what the fuck is this all about? And she was like, looks like somebody lost their register, huh? Somebody's lost their register. That's right. That's what happens when somebody walks away from their register. 
That's why you should never walk away from your register. You never know. You never know. And I was like, there's four fucking people shopping in this goddamn store. And you called me because one of those four fucking people came up? Like, what? what is wrong with you? And that was like the whole fucking dynamic of, of that store. And, and I worked there um, through college. I had a job on campus doing like... Uh, in the administra- ad- administrative office at my college. There's like one guy that I like there. Uh, and the only reason I would go in most days is because I had a, a crush on one of the girls I was working with. <laughs> that I never had the balls to ask out either. <laughs> like I never fucking asked her out. I danced with her once at a college dance and I never fucking had the balls to ask her out. But it was cool, though, you know, because, like, we kind of got to know each other, and we became, like, pretty good friends, uh, and we would, like, talk all the time and stuff, and that was kind of cool. Uh, I haven't talked to her in fucking forever, though. Um, I should do a better job of keeping up with people. I never had the ball ass this girl out, but I would go, I would, like, I hated, I also didn't like this fucking job either, because I would, like, stuff envelopes. Uh, I like giving the tours because I would get to talk to people and uh, and like be funny and shit. Like I I, I, I always kind of enjoyed that uh, giving the tours. Like I gave a bunch of tours. I love that shit. Stuffing envelopes, making phone calls, to, like ask people for money. Fucking hated that shit. But I would do it because I got to hang out with this girl. So uh, like I'm the fucking o- like this is like OG Jim Pam shit from the office. You know I fucking lived that life. I just didn't get married to that girl. <laughs> but like I would work that job and then I would go home and work through like all of the all of the breaks. Like I would work at the grocery store through all of the breaks. Um, and then I worked there uh, the summer before my sophomore year of college as well. Uh, or did I? Hold on. I'm getting my timelines wrong, right? Uh, cause I'm like old now and I'm trying to figure this stuff out. No, no, that's right. I did work through that my, the, the summer before my sophomore year. Cause I came back and I got that same campus job again, but I only worked there for one semester, uh, because I worked too much and I ran out of work study, uh, my sophomore year. And so like the second semester of my sophomore year, I, uh, I just, I just, like, didn't have a, a job. It was, like, the first time that I, like, didn't have a job. And I thought about doing, um, Shop and Save again, uh, for the second semester, but I went back for Christmas, and, uh, and I hated it so much. Like, I was just so fucking miserable, uh, that I told the general manager that I'm putting in my two weeks, um, like, the, like, pretty much after the first shift that I got in there for and, uh, and then I gave my tie to the, to the, the stock manager, uh, I think his name is Mark, he was super fucking cool, um, he was great, he had, like, a real deadpan set of humor, sense of humor, too, so he'd make these, like, weird deadpan remarks that for a little while, like, I didn't understand whether they were fucking jokes or not, uh, I liked him, he was a cool dude, he was a good dude, but, uh, after that, so I had that one semester where I, like, didn't have this job. So I was just fucking dead broke uh, that semester. Like, I stopped buying... I, I had bought books in forever. I hadn't bought CDs in forever. That's the other thing I used to spend my money on is fucking albums. I used to buy CDs all the goddamn time. All the goddamn time. I had a huge collection of CDs, right? Like, in high school, like, I was known for just having a stack of CDs in my backpack that I would cycle through. Like, I, and I don't fucking do that anymore because I just don't have the fucking money. But, you know, but also, like, when I was, like, 14, 15, up to, like, 23, I didn't have to fucking deal, about, deal with rent or anything. Like, I didn't have to worry about food. <laughs> you know, like, I was getting that shit taken care of. Uh... Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, 
uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.